going. We can see where we've gone. And we're sticking around the 23K and we're kind of overbought. And you can see this on a daily. And now there's a few things that people have asked me. Uh, I had a few people ask me, you know, what's your positioning on uh, Bitcoin? And um, I, I've done several things in here. If you look, um, let me find the charts that I want to see. Uh, I was a buyer when we had a big drop all the way down to this 15,000 uh, under the 800. The 800 level is was a big area for me. And uh, I was a big buyer uh, when we went down to those levels because I was looking for it. You know, I'm just going through the different charts here. But this shows it because I, I marked them. I had a hedge on Bitcoin. I took half of my Bitcoin and I hedged it from the 2100 level all the way back down to this 15,800 which was a big level to me. It's not as big as the 14K area, but it is a, a, a bounce point. And then I went short at the 18K level and then bought it again at the 15K and then uh, sold at the 18K and then went short 20% hedge here, targeted my 15,800. And instead of getting to there, we went all the way back up to this 23,000 area. And now we've created this pattern here um, that you see that I drew. And that's where we are right now. So I've got all these different charts going together. Now, where can we go and where will I start shorting more? Because you have to understand that I've increased my position. I, I mean, I did really well um, with all of the different hedges that I had. Uh, that helped me out a great deal and it helped me build up more Bitcoin. So my percentages are off. It's not like uh, I, I own far more Bitcoin now than I did back in uh, 2022 or 2021. It's I, I've expanded on and on and I've just grown it. And I put new money into, the, into it when we drop down to these levels down here. Uh, this was a pretty big area and as well as closing out the half of my hedge here um, uh, I I did very well um, so I expanded my um, positions just from size by profitability uh, so where do we go from here what, what do I want to do how do I want to protect myself so I'm playing this whole area and my next area up that I've showed you on these other charts is right up to this 24,000, this high right here, uh, 25,209, just about right there, all the way from um, the mid uh, 24,000, around 24,600, let's say. I believe that is five, 600 in that area, though. So this next zone up is what I would look for as resistance. Uh, that's the only thing on the charts besides what we have right here which we went above. So now the chart's trying to decide. We're also short-term overbought. So one of the things that could happen is that this drops down because if you look, we've got a, a short-term pattern here. It's not very noticeable. And I'll draw it in yellow because it's not really well-defined. And because of that, it's just kind of meh. But it's there. And you have to respect what you see, not what you think. Um, that's one of the tricks to trading uh, that I have always used. And I go against what I feel will happen often because of what is actually on the chart. So you see this type of W that's extended up. It's the uh, classic sea dragon or um, uh, what do they call it? Sea monster pattern. And uh, from this area up here, we could easily pull back down to there before we make, and let's draw this as a blue line. And this is just a short-term perspective, like within the next week or so. All right, so if we go back to January 20th, uh, uh, 14th, all the way to where we are now, what is the 23rd, 21st, I'm sorry getting these dates all mixed up. Um, 
Today is the 22nd. Tomorrow is the 23rd. Yesterday was the 21st, right? <laughs> Today is Sunday, right? The 22nd, yes. Okay, so what we have here, we have this like sea monster pattern that will likely retrace back to the low uh, 20,000 range. And before we do that, what should I do? Should I hedge an extra 10% um, here? Um, I kind of want to do that because this is a short term trade. So if we go back above this 23, this area right here, 23,300 is to retest the top here. I'm going to short and then target this low, uh, 20,000 and I'll do that with 10%. So let's draw the lines ahead of time. Now this is kind of already a double top, so I'm going to miss the entry and that's okay. I don't make all my entries. Sometimes I miss them, but it might also explode all the way up to here. And I probably shouldn't do that this quickly ahead of time, right? Nah, I, I like where I am. Um, so yeah, let's put this in here. The extra 10%. Oh, let me go over and put in head short because that's important. Trading against what I already own, which is a big factor for me. I always tell people that's, in my opinion, the smart way to trade, and that's what I do. Uh, here, and then we'll take this down here and blue and put in target. This is our target right here. So if I'm looking for just a short term trade, now I don't like the geometry of this and the way the, the volume is acted, but it is what it is. And I don't get to choose what I like or dislike. That's, you know, I have to trade what I see and what is there. Um, I could always reduce the size or even maybe ignore the trade, but I don't think there's a need. And if I zoom into this pattern, let's go down to a 45 minute chart here. It's kind of got, it's pretty well defined here as a double top within the short time frame. Um, so it could easily collapse back down here. Um, the thing that I don't like so much about it, it's geometry is kind of off. I can go over and mark this spot as the start and that makes it more equalized and gives it better geometry and that makes more sense. Yeah, that's the, the point right here. But the time frame which it did this in was only one day, um, whereas this was several days from the 14th all the way to the 18th. That was four verse one. Um, and again, then it repeated itself with doing this very quickly. And this was done actually in the same day before it went over and uh, went back up to here. Now, what do I think of this right here? I might have missed the entry. Um, I don't mind if I did. Uh, this would be the target down here. If there's more, if there's people out there that want more of a risky trade, um, they could take that right from where we are and target this number down here. This is likely where we're going to go at some point before we make the numbers to go to um, the 24,000, the mid 24,000 range. So what I'm going to do and what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to hedge 10% here and then above probably closer to 25k. I'm going to hedge another 10%. And I do not mind doing this because I own a lot of crypto uh, that I bought under these levels from all the way down here. And I've made pretty good profits. So I want to kind of hedge and give myself the ability in case we get the bigger move down, which is likely to still occur, um, to under the 15,000 and all the way back down to this 14,000 range. 
um, but still a statistical probability. So I don't want to get stupid. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at. And I'd hedge, let's see, copy. So this is what I'm looking at to go over into. I'm going to be looking to hedge 10% short here and 10% short there around the 25K area. Um, so I'm covered. And again, I'm going to target this for just the short term. If we go above here and collapse from here down to here, then that's just the trade. If we go above to here, collapse down to here, half of it will come off, and the other 10% I'll look for uh, closer to this area down here, because this would be the secondary target area. Do, 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 just based off of that. And I could even tr go back to that 15,800. But uh, the, the point is, I'm gonna be hedging. I just wanna make that very clear. I know exactly what my plan is and how I'm going to trade everything. Um, so we got the two targets. So you see that right there, and that's basically it. There's nothing really interesting in the marketplace right now. Everything is pretty much just uh, sticking around numbers. Uh, uh, we can take a look at Ethereum if you like. Um, that's just sticking around these numbers again. Um, my short hedge over here that I added finally as a 20%. I could add more. If we get above 1,700, I will probably add 10%. I should put that up there. So if we get above here, mm -hmm. All right. boom, boom, boom. So I'll look for a short of 10% added to here. Oh. And there we go. All right, so on Ethereum, the other one that I have. Um, as far as XRP goes, I'm not going to touch that. I'm just going to let that ride. It's sitting around that 40. Um, it went up to the 41, almost up to 42. And again, if you know my thinking, is I want to see a bigger movement on this happen and for us to get numbers all the way back up to here to the 50 range. It's been pretty oversold. You can see the big spike that you had here. Um, so I'm not too interested in doing anything with this until we get the numbers all the way up here. So we got a ways to go on. Uh, XRP. And that's pretty much it. I was asked about, and I will add this to this and making this video longer than I want it to be, uh, strong. And this is one that I, I just did analysis for, maybe even for the same person, um, way back, like a year ago. And they're asking me about where do I think it should go from now. This used to be way back when in the $1,000 range. That is correct. It was all the way up, way up. If we put this over here and here, let me, uh, anyway, uh, you see the spike that it had all the way up to the $16 range. It's very thinly traded. It's not like there's a lot of this. This was about 18,000 K and um, 16, 50,000. Uh, this is not a really heavily traded um, uh, one, but if I was to have traded this, I would buy it, let's say in this range, all the way from the four to $6 range. I would hold it for above these numbers over here. So you can look at something that you're going to get, not only a double, I would take a half off at, if I get 100% return, that basically makes it a free ride. Basically, I took 100% off. Um, I have no risk. Uh, let the risk go. And if it goes 20 times or, you know, up to, uh, you know, whatever the numbers are, uh, if it goes 20 times, let's say, and it goes to like $120, then I would go over and call that a trade. Um, 
that's what this has. This is just a dice roll, and it has so much upside available because this was once a thousand dollars, eleven hundred, I believe it was, somewhere in that range. So uh, that's what I would look for if I wanted to take a gamble. If I wanted to just take a pure risk, and this right here is likely to get tested again sometime, um, probably surpassed. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of a risky thing. It could also just collapse and disappear. Uh, but if I wanted to take a risk on it, I would say the upside is more attractive than the downside. And uh, this is one that could come back. The one thing that I never liked that I, I made uh, note of this a long time ago uh, is that it's traded on like KuCoin and exchanges that are kind of, hmm. So not something I would be able to touch because I wouldn't trust them with my money. Um, and that would be the, the thinking there. But I wanted to add that in there because I was asked about it. I think you have upside potential. I would look for uh, over 100% return to afford to go back up to here from the $6 range and then take half off and then let the rest ride for uh, 20 times or whatever ridiculous amount you can get in the future uh, when the markets come back. Uh, so that's an idea for you. Uh, but again, I don't trade these altcoins and I don't trade on exchanges like this. No way in hell. Uh, even though they've been pretty solid, uh, it's just not my thing. I don't take that kind of risk because I have too much money at risk. And I don't want to be po, if you know what I mean. Um, other than that, that's this video. I'll go start doing the other one, which is on the five years from 2023. What do we expect with Bitcoin? So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great week.